we are now going to move on to another rather quick subject. And that is finding inverse functions and one-to-one -one functions. Let's get one-to-one -one functions out of the way first. One-to-one -one can also be written this way. It's much easier, yeah. Um, let's look at f of x huh, equals x minus 2. We just got done with that in one of those problems. Let's look at that. The quick and easy way to tell if, if a function is one-to-one -one or not is to graph it. So that's what graphing calculators are good for. I'm going to clear this, x minus 2, okay, x minus, minus 2, and I'm going to graph. There it is. Okay, now, it is actually needed for me to put this on the paper so that I can draw through it and show you. Didn't need to make it that big. I really don't need it that big. Okay. What does it mean for a function to be one-to-one? -one? There's an easy answer and a harder answer. The easy answer is this. Oops, not that. This. Look at the picture and mentally, because you don't want to draw on your graphing calculator. Mentally draw a horizontal line through the graph in a bunch of different places. Okay, now notice the horizontal line touches the graph at only one point, no matter where you draw it. This is a one-to-one -one function. I'll tell you why you care in just a minute. Now, I'm going to graph a function that we, we know and love very well. How about y equals x squared? Graph. There it is. Okay, we're going to see if this is a one-to-one -one function. We know it's a function, but is it one-to-one? -one? Well, let's just come over here. the parabola that ate Northwest Arkansas. Okay. I'm going to draw a horizontal line through the graph Notice that the horizontal line touches the graph at two points. This is not a one-to-one -one function. It is, of course, a function. It passes the vertical line test, but it's not it's not one-to-one. One-to-one? No, it's not. Not one-to-one. -one. Not one to one. It's important to keep in mind what is and is not one to one because you can only have inverse operations. You can only create. No, that's the wrong way to say it. 
only one-to-one -one functions have inverse functions. There, that's just the way it is. Well, why do you care about inverse functions? You care about inverse functions because inverse functions undo each other or they make each other more understandable. You'll, you'll see this at the very end of the semester. Actually, you'll see it next week, that they can make each other more understandable. But right now, it's just enough to know that only one-to-one -one functions can have inverse functions. Now, we're going to look at the, what is so great about an inverse function. Some of the really great stuff. Here it is. Let's call this f of x. I don't want to write in red. f of x. This is our little and it consists of separate points that are not connected. These are each just points. The uh, domain, I mean, we're like going back to beginning algebra when you were first introduced to functions. This is like one of the truly baby examples of domain and range. Okay, the domain of f of x is negative 9, negative 7, negative 2, and positive 5. All the x coordinates, negative 9, negative 7, negative 2, and positive 5. And the range is all the y coordinates of all the points. Negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 5. Okay, no big deal. Now we're going to find the inverse function of this function. F inverse, this is how it's written, F inverse of X. That is, it's the inverse function of F of X. Well, it too will have one, two, three, four points. But here's what they are. See this negative 9, negative 8 up here. For the inverse function, that becomes negative 8, negative 9. And look here. In f of x, one of our points is negative 7, negative 6. In the inverse function, it becomes negative 6, negative 7 and so on for each of the points. They reverse the domain and range. They, they reverse the X coordinates and the Y coordinates. Negative four, negative two, and negative five, five. So that the domain of F inverse domain is the range of f of x. And the range of f inverse of x is the domain of f of x.
Yep. I think that is so cool. And there's a method for finding the inverse function. I mean, here it's just really simple. You reverse the X and the Y coordinates. But down here, where you're actually given an equation, let's look at how you find an inverse function. Well, first you would wanna make sure it's one-to-one. -one. So you would graph it. And it is five X minus two. Okay, yeah, that's one to one. Imagine drawing horizontal lines through the whole thing. Those horizontal lines will intersect the blue graph at only one point. Each horizontal line will intersect the blue graph at only one point. So it's one to one. So it has an inverse function. Let's find it. Okay, we have y equals 5x minus 2. The next step is to reverse the x and the y. We're trying to find the inverse, so we have to reverse the x Now solve for y. OK, so here we reversed x and y. Let me write it over here. Reverse and then solve for Y. Well, let's see, to solve for Y, I need to solve for the Y term first. So I'll add two to both sides, plus two, plus two. So I'll have X plus two on the left and five Y on the right because negative two plus two is zero. Now I have X plus two on the left equals five Y on the right to solve for y, I'll divide both sides by 5. So my answer will be y equals x plus 2 over 5. Or you can also write it this way. x over 5 plus 2 over 5. Five. And remember, there's a one in front of the X. So now I can actually write it this way. I can write it one fifth X. One fifth times X plus two fifths. Why would I want to do that? Because this if we call this f of x, then f inverse of x will be one fifth x plus two fifths. You can see that this is a line in slope intercept form. This is a line in slope intercept form. If my math lab will take this, it's fine. But I wanted you to know that you can also write it like that. Okay, let's find some more inverses. Ooh! F of X.
equals the seventh root of x minus four. Okay, well, here are the typical steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four that you will always follow because most of these functions start with f of x or g of x or h of x. And then it's up to you to in your first step. Change the f of x to y. y equals the seventh root of x minus four. Now switch your x's and y's, that's step two. X equals the seventh root of y minus four. Okay, step three. Solve for y. Y is trapped underneath the seventh root radical. We have to get it out from under. I am going to raise both sides of this function this equation to the seventh power. Why would I do that? Here's why. Because you know that the seventh root of y minus four raised to the seventh power is going to be y minus four to the seven over seven power, which just happens to be one. So this is y minus four. No longer trapped. So we'll have x to the seventh power equals y minus four. Now add four to both sides. Negative four plus four is zero, or four minus four is zero, leaving you with y, so y equals x to the seventh power plus four. Now your last step F inverse of X equals X to the seventh power plus four. And those are the steps, all the steps that you use every time you convert, well, every time you uh, find the inverse of a function. Incidentally, I should have graphed that. I already know it's one to one, so I was trying to save time. Um, but let's do it just so you'll know what the seventh root looks like. Um, seventh roots are kind of weird because 
you have to use this number five in math. And you can't most of the time you just can't go ahead and use it. So I'm going to uh, ask you to watch my steps. I'm going to type seven. That's the root. Um, now math. As soon as I go down to number five, the X root and click on number five or click on five here. This becomes the seventh root. Now, for those with the older operating operating system, you're still going to see the seven in front and you're going to see the X root sign. OK, what you have to um, believe me on is uh, the to the calculator in the inside the calculator. This is what it means. Seventh root. Now I am going to put what am I going to put under there? The seventh root of X minus four. Yes. X minus four, then go to the outside. Now let me show you how you would write that. Well, let me let me graph it first. OK, definitely one to one. Now these are not horizontal. See how they're tipping up, tipping up very slowly. Slanted up very slowly. And this isn't flat, even though it looks like it is, it really is tilted up. And this is slanted and not directly up and down or it wouldn't be a function and it is. So um, even though you always cannot tell from looking at the graph, it's true. Um, still, still it is, trust me, it's one to one. Now I want to go to mode, mode. OK, and I'm going to move math print over to classic. So I have to use the up arrow to make math print blink and then move over to classic and then hit enter. And now I'm going to go back to Y equals. And this is how it would be written. I'm going to clear it and we're going to do this from scratch with the old operating system. If I want to write the seventh root of X minus four. Now it decides to give me trouble. There. OK, I'll type seven, just regular seven. Then I'll go to math. Then I'll come down to five. Or just click on five. But when I come down to five, I hit enter. Now I need parentheses because X minus four is grouped together. What that means is that X minus four is underneath the seventh root radical. And this looks weird as anything. It looks like seven times that. But to the calculator, if I were to go back to mode and go up to where math print is blinking and hit enter so that now math print is highlighted and then go back to Y equals, it puts it back the other way. So some things you have to take on faith if you have the TI-83 or the 83's operating system. OK, is there anything else? Let's see. Oh yeah, this, this is very important. Hint, hint, you'll see it on the final. Did I say that? Oops. OK. We're being asked to find this.
making sure we have time. One fourth. X to the third minus five. OK, and I'm not going to graph it this time. I promise you it's one to one. So step one. I'll have y equals one fourth times x to the third minus five. Step two. Switch the x and the y. x equals one fourth y to the third minus five. Now we have to solve for y. My first step would be to add five there. Add five to both sides of the equation so that on the left I have x plus five and on the right I have one fourth times y to the third. Then my next step would be to remove that one four by multiplying by four over one so that the fours cancel out. Of course, I have to do this over here as well. But there are no fractions over here, so I'm just going to multiply by four because four and four over one are exactly the same number. Well, the fours cancel over here on the right, leaving me with one over one, which is one. So on the right, I'll have one times y to the third, which is y to the third. On the left, I'll have four parentheses x plus five parentheses closed. I'll distribute the four. four x plus 20. Now, I don't care what y to the third equals, I need y. So I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. Now the cube root of y to the third is y to the three over three, which is y to the one, which is y. So I now have y equals the cube root of four x plus 20. Once you get y equals You're ready for step four, which is um, F inverse of X equals the cube root of four X plus 20. So, Now we're being asked to graph both of these, but we've run out of time. So I am going to say that quite honestly, when you see a problem like this on the final exam, you're not gonna be asked to graph it, thank goodness. You are just going to be asked to find this, which is hard enough. So you need to practice, 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 and do every similar problem you can manage because there will be easy problems on the final, but most of them are gonna be pretty hard, which is what you'd expect of college algebra. So you're gonna have to study a whole bunch. So class is over. If you have questions, please feel free to stay around. 
um, I am going to be finishing up here. You have a good day. I'll see you on Wednesday.